I'm Jesse Clark. I, um, I'm part of the San Diego Space Society, and one of the things that we do in San Diego is we operate the Space Travelers Emporium. And it really is what it sounds like. It is a storefront that um, we're sort of promoting the idea of commercial space opportunities and really letting people know that we as citizens are able to do things in this place that you could only do as an astronaut before. So one of the things we you know, we, we've been operating for a year now, and besides the outreach part, we actually do sell things, and we're going to be uh, onboarding uh, opportunities to do um, uh, FAA certified astronaut training, uh, parabolic flights through zero G, and suborbital flights through the up and coming up, up and coming companies. Um, so we really are kind of you know letting people know that these are things that they can do, and part of that of course is you know well you know, one well, of the questions that were poised to us was. Um, you know, um, well, what are you going to take with you when you go into space? So, yeah, so we started contemplating, you know, putting together um, a space luggage or, or things that you would take with you in space. So, part of the discussion here is not going to be telling you what we're selling because that's that's not what I want to do. But it is it's a conversation I want to have but to figure out well what is what do, what do you think of when you think of traveling into space and what are the things you're going to want to bring with you. Not just an, or, or a suborbital stay, like up and down, but like if you're going to go to the Bigelow Space Hotel, uh, what are you going to bring with you? I mean, you're, you're going to be living in a microgravity environment. Um, you know, what what are the things that come to mind when when uh, when you when we go into space? I don't even think about housewares, but I'm thinking I want to be able to. How do I send home a postcard and 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 what kind of camera do I have that I can take pictures and send back postcards? So how do you get mail delivery from Yeah, I want some orders? kind of, a, or some kind of virtual postcard or whatever I'm going to send home. What's, what's my postcard metaphor? Right. I mean, not, not, I don't mean like a real card, but whatever. But that the space of postcard. It's going to be an e-card that you'll send from the yeah, network. Yeah, some kind of an e-card with pic and pictures. And <laughs> having oh, okay. a great time. I wish you were here. <laughs> <laughs> It gives a new meaning to the unbearable lightness of being, doesn't it? <laughs> so there was um, there was something we saw that they did on, they developed on the space station. They they made a um, space coffee cup. You know, most of the times they have this this pouch with a tube. So they basically you know put water in there, inject water in it, and they and it's either re reconstitutes some kind of juice or they heat their food. But that's you know that's sort of old school. We want to really do some interesting things. Um, and so the space coffee cup was invented, and it, and it, it uses um, it's sort of a, a clear plastic sheet that's folded in such a way that it will, with, with the capillary action of water, it actually goes into this open-ended cup, and then you can drink out of it like it's a cup, but you're not using a straw. Um, and, and it's using the capillary action, which is sort of the water has a tendency to, to cling to itself kind of thing. So with that, you're able to actually have this coffee cup and drink out of it like a coffee cup would, only it's not, you're not using a straw. So that was some of the things that we thought we would. Yeah, so it's sort of a hydration pack. <laughs> I, I, yeah. yeah. I would be interested to know, what are some of the things that you anticipate not being allowed? In space? Mm -hmm. it, well, in microgravity? In, in my luggage. Yeah, immediately we needed beverages. <laughs> <laughs> when you first mentioned this, the first thing I thought was like, oh, what is TSA going to not yeah. allow me to do <laughs> right. right. to space? No, no explosives. <laughs> uh, well, that's a good question. That's another way to look at it, is what you're not able to bring. Um, obviously, things that have are in the under pressure, like, and, and there is what there is a there is a beer that's being developed for drinking in space. But as far as generally carbonated things, uh, you know, we can consume carbonation because uh, it, it's able to, well, the carbonation is able to, to leave the liquid. But in space, you, there's no way to go. You just, you just, it stayed in there. So that, that's some other problem. You'd be really uncomfortable if you drank a Coke in space. Yeah, you wouldn't yeah, want to. <coughs> They've actually flown Coke in space. Carbonated? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They actually, Coca-Cola worked with NASA on two occasions. They actually flew the Coke can. We have pictures of it. They developed a cap to it. Where the astronauts had to press that and write it into their mouths. The first time they did this in the early shuttle mission didn't work too well because they hadn't, they didn't have a refrigerator. 
They were not. So the warm like cup. Warm cup. Yeah. <laughs> Next time they did it, they had a refrigerator and they basically had coke. Oh, wow. Yeah, but they Product actually did it. That. placement is what we're seeing. That was exactly That's what, what it was all about. Yeah. I'm glad to see pictures of astronauts yeah. drinking coke and space. But I don't mean coffee cup, I do mean hydration pack, because I do need some kind of a water up there. Yeah. Um, I would think that people would want some sort of easy, easy clothing. I don't know how easy it yeah, would be to... Yeah, something where you don't have to be in a jumpsuit yeah, the you, entire time. Well, but some, yeah, fashion, so it's going to be space fashion, but you're also like, it has to be pretty practical, because I would think it would be, I don't know, what it would be like to try to get dressed in space. Yes. You mean hydration because you, the the enjoyment of drinking or the novelty of drinking space, or because you're worried that you're not going to be hydrated? You have to be hydrated because well, you'll well, die if you drink. But well, what I wonder is, <laughs> these are things we're bringing to market. Presumably, the the space corporation that's offering us the trip is going to provide our basic needs like water, toilets, a place to sleep, food to eat. So these are things that we would bring that would be iconoclastic to ourselves. So well, yeah, I, would, I, I wouldn't necessarily eliminate the what the company might provide. I mean, it's just it's. But the idea is just the, the, the reason for this um, panel or this uh, session is to figure out ideas of things that we could then offer at the space fellows Emporium. So, like the like a hydration pack, maybe that's like something that you could buy and then bring with you on your space flight. Or if you want, uh, you know, uh, if there's specific kinds of clothing like flight suits. You know that's what the early astronauts might have worn, but they don't. You, know, you see, you see people now in uh, collar shirts and uh, and khakis mm -hmm. and socks. space socks. Yeah, space socks. You know, there's no need for shoes. You know, you're not walking on anything, so space socks are more fashion item than, than anything else. Well, personal electronics. I mean, you know, things like cell phones, tablets, computers. You know, th those are things that people would want to bring if they want to stay connected. I mean, above just clothing and all the basic necessities. The ability to, to have something like that that would work with whatever network's available, assuming that's not provided. I mean, I know if I went, one of the things I would want to do is communicate with my wife. Right. And, you know, work. and that might be, but you, know, you have the advantage of having a microgravity environment, so would there be something else more particular to that? Well, but that was my point. In other words, I'm not suggesting I know exactly what the best form of communication would be, but I think people would want to bring. In other words, if you told me your iPhone or, or Android phone wouldn't work in that space environment for whatever reason, then what what would be the alternative that you might be able to provide to them that would provide equivalent functionality that they could get at your store? Hint, hint. <laughs> the first private space traveler, uh, Dennis Tito, thought about this question quite a bit. Uh, he flew on April 28, 2001. What he was allowed to bring up, he actually had a, a normal camera at that time, so he brought up almost 40 rolls of film, uh, uh, which he brought up. And he had it in a special bag just so for radiation, whatever. Right. Uh, he brought up extra thick socks, we were talking, because your feet, sometimes the feet get a bit cold. And then he brought up a whole bunch of music on disc or cassettes that he really liked, a lot of it being the Beatles or classic music. And his favorite thing to do was to sit by the window, looking out and listening to his music and floating. And that was the, the two key things he brought was his film and his music. That was unique to what he wanted because it was the taste that he wanted. Mm -hmm. He also did something very interesting. This is a very wealthy guy, a good friend of mine. And, uh, he, wa he volunteered to do uh, galley uh, duty. He actually to clean stuff up and put stuff away and even make food for people. Because he figured he'd be able to get the best food first. Ah. <laughs> now the Russians bring up caviar. The Russians from almost day one have brought up vodka. <laughs> uh, even a few Russians just for the story brought up cigarettes, which Drive with the American crews drives them crazy. Yeah. Cigarettes. But they actually brought up cigarettes. In a space vehicle. Oh. Believe it or not. And, uh, I believe it. <laughs> sad. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the old era where they had the big airships all filled with, with hydrogen, well, all these rich guys flew on them, and they loved smoking. They were addicted to their cigars, so they actually built a room on the Hindenburg yeah. and the Graf Zeppelin yep. where they could actually smoke uh, in a fairly safe area and stuff. So, you have to look at all the vices, you might say, that you want to bring up. Start, start with the vices and work the way 
I think you should have a special space beverage of choice. You've got to have something fun that you yeah. only have there. I mean, I love the idea of the music, and it's like I was thinking music, but music is something you kind of bring there. Maybe there's a certain space beverage or. Yeah, it would have to be a space, a space beverage that would stay mixed because of that gravity. It wouldn't be mixed. It would, one would be heavy Something the other. that's fun, unique to the area, that not something you really First American mission to, to go up with alcohol was uh, the first American flight around the moon, Apollo 8. And, uh, oh, yeah. The thing was, though, it was snuck on board. It was actually put on board uh, with their Christmas meals, and the astronauts didn't know about it in advance. And when they got to the moon, all of a sudden, they're like taking through their Oh, wow, a little bottles of bourbon or something. And Frank Borman, the commander of the mission, said, put those things away. He says, we're not going to touch those. We're not going to open them on this mission. Because you know the first thing that goes wrong with this flight, they'll blame it on the alcohol. <laughs> so we're not going to open it. I think it would be cool to have a watch that um, not only showed you the time zone where you were, but also you know UTC. And then also showed you the time on the space station, so it was rapid. You know, you've gone sunset, sun down, sunset. Oh, wow. you know? Hell yeah. So you can actually like prepare, like, okay, I know it's gonna have sunrise soon, so I want to run over to the window and actually right. have this really fast clock. On. You want your orbital uh, diurnal clock? Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so you want to know what time zone you're, you're flying over? Mm -hmm. You want uh, universal uh, time, and you want uh, station. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But you'd also want it's on the there, Rosetta. It's the Rosetta watch. Yes. Some exactly. sort of setting. To say, oh great, I'm going to be nearing Los Angeles. I can see my hometown, yeah. and so you want to kind of know when that is, and have it probably set to your kind of watch device or something, so that you could go and look out the window or take pictures or whatever. So it's like a kind of it's a tourist, world you know. GPS. <laughs> That's a, I like that world GPS. Some of the kind of uh, cool novelty items that come home with. Like, right. I spent so many days in. Short days, but days in space. I don't remember what time the space station goes on. Is it off of Houston and, and Russian, or, or is it actually use UTC? I don't remember. I would assume. I think it's space time. Space time. Space time. Right, ben. I thought it was UTC because there was an issue with the Jewish um, anniversary. Oh, yeah. For celebrating the um, Shabbat because of sunset. It's like you Every many minutes, right. you know, so, so they had to have a rabbi officiate on what would be the official Shabbat time. Uh, talk about that with the bustles also, which direction they're yeah. going to bow. They actually right. did do that. Yeah. Um, when uh, the uh, Saudi prince, <laughs> the Saudi <laughs> prince is closing, <laughs> and uh, he actually did get advice, religious advice, on where do you point, where Mecca. <laughs> And uh, how many times to do it? And they actually said, okay, if you do your prayers once a day and uh, face Earth, you're cool. But they actually did address that uh, religious issue. Being at Mecca is on Earth. That's yeah. Good. And they, they <laughs> solved it in a very reasonable way. Mm -hmm. uh, but those are great issues of how do you deal with all the cultural uh, all yeah, issues. That might be an interesting little kind of like helper card. Right. You know, it's like, you know, what if I'm. Oh yeah. yeah. What, what should I do about X in space? What should I do about X? Right. Oh, the other yeah. what, what In other words, it's the religious yeah. contingency yeah. card. Right. Space, yeah. No, a space tourism manual. I mean, that would be yeah, one of those things you would go How about the country. Hitchhiker's Guide to Orbit? That might right. be. Right. <laughs> but you have like a new, you go to a new country, you go get like visiting Switzerland, all yeah. the things right. you should do and see. So there needs to be like a book for visiting the Bigelow Space Habitat, like you should do. Yeah. 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 I remember that name of that company that does the fake uh, terms of books, ones? like Mulvania, and like they're basically like making up these cultures. And, yeah. You, know, you, you talked about your merchandise. I, I remember when uh, the movie 2001 came out, mm -hmm. and in it, when there's a flight to the hotel, uh, the guy's going to the restroom, and there's this whole card with a list of how do you go right. to the restroom in zero gravity. A company got permission and printed those up and was selling them. Really? As merchandise, yeah. I, really, I actually bought one a long time ago. Uh, but that was just kind of a fun uh, merchandise thing. 
That, that reminds me of another thing is you would want to bring lots of wet wipes because you always hear the stories of the astronauts saying like they gave us five wet wipes a day or three wet wipes a day to that basically was shower many as you could myself with. Right. So you'd want to bring like a whole container of them right. for you. Yeah. Your personal hygiene. Is that like bringing yes. cigarettes to Europe? Like well, Eastern Europe to, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, it's funny what John brought up too. If you remember, I in the days of probably the 40s and 50s, Classic airline flights and everything else. We actually put on a suit and tie and your Sunday best to go fly. You would also get from the airlines special certificates, passes, badges. My father, I inherited most of my father's, that said you were special. You crossed the international data line. You went in on a constellation across the Pacific, stuff like this. You probably want to have some, you know, mementos given to you from the tourism companies and such to let you know that you were special. You one of the first to do that. I circled the earth 15 times and all I got was a slouchy t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm afraid about luggage size because uh, my wife and I, if we travel to space together, we've been married over 30 years. I don't know if you could make luggage big enough to hold all of our relationship baggage. <laughs> and they're only up for an orbit, I'm telling you. <laughs> now, uh, some people like to bring their own, even to luxury resorts, their own soaked mm -hmm. and they have a preference. They might have allergies to typical things. Right. Uh, perfumes. Uh, now, what, how are you going to do hairstyles uh, in hairstyles, space? Yes. Yeah, you always uh, have the women on the space station live with a batty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like the big they, wild hair. I'm they, good with it. They, yeah. they, it's the only place in the well, it's the only place where my hair is going to look big and wild. <laughs> But those I think we need to especially design space beanie for women. Yeah. 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 They did use that before. Yeah. 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 A little vapor pressure hair, uh, hair glue. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Have your hair helmet okay. styled okay. like you like. Just she take she your pretty hair and freeze it. Yeah. 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 Because like, you think about it, you have a hard suitcase and it's floating that gets away from you. It's not like crack somebody in the head, right? Also, we have to have maybe like a long tether, you know, so it could stay tethered. Like what are those colors from your, yeah. your boogie board? Or like the ones yeah. that are kids, you know? <laughs> you know There's a possibility that there'd be a... You push off, you float across, you stop yourself, and then your luggage whacks you in the head. Exactly. So it may be soft luggage. Right. When it's cushioning, it's like the old wagon tongues. There's lots of Velcro on it. If it comes too far forward, it stops. It's got like the, the rigidity in forward motion, but it's flexible when it's dragging behind you. You could also put down a... Well, if, you, if that's going to be provided, then I'm, I'm going to want isolation chambers so I can be away from the people who want to do that. <laughs> we're on the bus, where everybody wants to like do all these things, and you just want to be left alone. Yeah. The book. Yeah. Well, the Russians, uh, Russians are the first to come up with uh, uh, magnetic checkers and magnetic chests on their submarines and such, mm -hmm. and small space and such. Yep. So I'm sure, that's, and I know they've done that on Skylab and other missions too. Now, most people like to wear these little um, eye, eye clothes because when you're sleeping, mm -hmm. they keep the lights on right. for emergency and other stuff. So some people might want to have their own specialized or velvet or whatever. Again, if you're talking about wealthy individuals in the early days, uh, they may have had it specially designed for them so that they can sleep well because it, it does blot out any of the light there. Same thing with uh, head headgear for sound because there's quite a bit of noise, particularly on the space shuttle, even on the space station, oh, yeah. which is mostly caused by airflow. You have to have a lot of airflow going by you, otherwise, if you're asleep or stationary, carbon dioxide builds up around you, and you could actually even die. You know, so there's extra airflow which causes a fair amount of noise just by airflow going through. So the ability to really block out sound. And this, maybe even a, a nice kind of looking helmet, kind of thing that's very comfortable, 
It even has a sensor or two that in case the carbon dioxide is building up around it. We found out we needed that quickly on the ISS. The first two segments were put together and the crews came back from both the shuttle missions and they were really testing. And they found out it was because the fact that there was carbon dioxide build up and the Russians realized real quick and the Americans had to change the positions of their fans in some of the areas where the crew would fall asleep. In the early days when there were only a couple of modules, you know, no one was really thinking about it. You know, set your bag up here and float and sleep in it. But they got their gang old testicles carbon dioxide build up. Well, it's three o'clock. We're already on time. Actually, that's fast by five minutes. Oh, is it? Oh, we still have five minutes? Yes. I expect you to be able to buy all of these things in your store, you know, the gift bags. Very soon. Please visit the gift center on the outside. Yeah. Just, you know that shuttle, what is it, Flight 001? Or, there's like a store where you can go and buy and... Oh, yeah, Flight, yeah, it is. And they'll have like already pre-packaged, like all the different things you need to be TSA. Oh, right. But it's pretty like, it's pretty novel some of this stuff. So they've got the shaving cream tape, you know, so you pull it like a little, like, you know, little piece of tape in and strip and you uh, put a little moisture and, you know, put it on your face. So there's like little things like that that I think would be... Uh, well, that's kind of the idea what I was trying to think of was you know, like prepackaged luggage sets or luggage stuff that you could just I buy. Mean, if you do stuff without water in it that you add water to, then it's going to be lighter, which I'm assuming that if we do launches that there'll be a significant weight limit to your yeah. luggage. What about his take on the uh, old-fashioned luggage tags that had all the locations? You could choose different planets and, oh, like, yeah, yeah. you know, luggage. voyage to Venus, mission to Mars, right. and you could have different luggage tag things, like you had been to all those places. Mm. And maybe even, even like, um, some of those designs could be, like, tattoos, so you could have, like, a tattoo. Like, I, I went to Mars space to Venus. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Did you get perfume on there? Yeah, you have to be... Perfume would be complicated because yeah. the smell of things yeah, is exactly. so different in space. But didn't they, they brought a bunch of roses up at one point to try to figure out, and they ended up actually making a shishido, made a, um, a perfume that was space rose smell, what roses smell like in space. Yeah. I remember awesome. vaguely something about <laughs> that, yeah. Now, uh, the provider, the company, would provide food with a lot of spices because the astronauts lose some of their taste buds oh, right. and sensitivity. But you might have your own certain flavors that you want to bring up also. Uh, and that that is something that is very important to a lot of people. So, so. Especially when food is, 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 a, is a common uh, gathering place for everyone to get together and it's sort of a socialized. Yeah. When the crews get supplies uh, from the Soyuz all the time, the first thing they the the ground people pack the last thing the ground people pack so the first thing they unpack on the station is fresh fruit mm -hmm. uh, everyone loves that to get that because that does have the smell and the taste and all those kinds of things. so uh, fresh fruit is probably in the early days going to be something provided but you may want to bring up uh, your own too. So. Good idea for a session. Thanks. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, that's fun. Right. So yeah. So hopefully we'll be able to provide some of these things for you. Anyway.